What's up, guys? This is just a little update. Um, got a couple things in the mail. So I spoke about some things in a video about some stuff I had coming that Taurus had sent me and all that stuff. But uh, just want to start off by saying people irritate me sometimes. Uh, I just hate it. Like uh, when someone has to correct you just to make themselves feel better. Like for instance, uh, I know that uh, a magazine is called a magazine, not a clip. Clips were used in, I think the last one was used in, for the M1 Grand in World War II or Korea, whatever they last decided to use that gun. And silencers are called suppressors, really. Silencers, not the name of it. But, you know, as I grew up, all the older timers, I guess, that served in World War II and stuff, or Korea, they referred to magazines as clips, and it kind of just became like a slang type of deal. Then, as I started getting into the gun scene, all you know, the anal people uh, had to let you know that it was called a magazine and not a clip. Like, for instance, um, you know, I went into a uh, gun place one time, and without thinking, I done knew, but it was called a magazine and not a clip, but I said, I need a 45, or 1911-45 magazine, 8-rounder, whatever, Chip McCormick. And he was like, we don't sell clips here. We sell magazines. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, really? He's like, the last clips were made for the M1 Grand Butler, or some crap. He was like, dude, you know what I'm talking about. You ain't got to be a little prick. And one of the reasons why you'll hear me sometimes say the word, say clip instead of magazine is, most people... They don't know a whole lot about guns, unless it's like a passion like mine, or a lot of people watch these YouTube videos. But, you know, like, I've, we, I, plenty of times I've told them, like, hey man, uh, grab me that magazine, or grab me that magazine over there when I'll be cleaning a gun or something, or I'll shoot and a buddy will be watching, and they'll take off, and I'll be like, where, where in the hell they go? And then they'll come back with, like, a guns and ammo magazine. Then I'll have to re-explain the whole ordeal, or I'll be like, hey man, hand me that magazine. They're like, I don't know where it's at. But it's right there, and I'm like, I don't know where it's at. I don't see it, and then they're looking for an actual gun. Anyway, it's just, it's simpler to say clip. Everybody knows what you're talking about. I don't I don't think anybody's thinking of a, a pre-made eight-round clip for M1 Grand when you're putting your gun. It's just like a slang, like, uh... I don't know. You might say, uh, I don't know, you might call Bayonet a knife or, you know, a machete, a bowie or something. You know, they know what you're talking about. Anyway, and just like uh, I was at Walmart the other day and this dude was like, uh, I actually was going to use the word suppressor, but I didn't think he was all that knowledgeable, but, uh, he goes, I was like, yeah, I don't know, because I've been thinking about buying a suppressor. I'm just not sure about threaded barrels and boosters. I'm doing my research on them. Or maybe just get one for a 22, but it's not really... Get one for a 22, not really a cool factor. Or a second type of cool, you know. Just to have my collection, I'd like to at least get one for a 9mm. Still thinking on it, though, and uh, I was telling him about it because we was talking. He was telling me about the new AR-15s that Walmart's having. By the way, I seen an ammo can of uh, 223 in Walmart for 140 bucks, 420 rounds. Walmart carrying ammo cans. Anyway, we was talking. He's like, <laughs> you know, it's called a suppressor, not a silencer. And I was like, really? Yeah, really, dude. Hope you got that out of your system. <laughs> I know you've been dying to tell somebody that for about three months now. But anyway, just something I think just kind of irritates me. But anyway, back to the subject, um, Taurus, they're very helpful, they sent this in, it only took a week, I'm still waiting on the stuff from Mossberg, uh, I told the lady, see, um, originally, I thought it was a bushing, then I took the grips off, and I realized they didn't have bushings, it was made into the frame, and, uh, I was telling the lady I needed a new one, because this one right here was just turning, instead of, uh, like, it, like it was stripped, but, it came that way. I was shooting it 
and it fell out I put it back in before I ever removed them and it just turned without ever tightening up didn't even get stiff at all and I told her but I was like I don't know I might need new bushings before I even took it off because I was just tired and I was just waiting to call them because on my ride home I remembered to do it because I figured she would tell me if I had bushings or not I asked her that well she sends me this it is a frame bushing right I get home take it off and I realize there's no bushing so I'm thinking what the hell did they send me you know and uh anyway I come to find I told her it was the the right bottom screw and see on the uh, Taurus model PT 92 this screw right here I guess because of safety or how it's designed differently this is a real small screw this is different than the others it actually does have a bushing but anyway they sent me that and I called them back and explained to them and I started looking as I was looking at the grips I noticed that it had chipped off and that was causing the threads not to go in and I screwed it into the actual grip part and uh, this part was chipped that fixed that screw because that screw wasn't very good it was borderline and this side wasn't milled deep enough anyway so they sent me a new pair of grips and I fixed these I sanded it down and I hauled this out on the inside and everything like that but for my inconvenience I went ahead and asked them to send me a pair of grips because these are like probably like 40 45 bucks who knows I might scratch them up one day get to keep but these look good Taurus they didn't really ask no questions um, anyway put, go ahead and put that back in there send me a couple screws too for it I might go ahead and change them all I'll probably just leave them because they're fine um, but uh thinking about buying another 22 probably gonna go price some tomorrow it's early morning now well in a few hours anyway um, I don't know I'm kind of on the fence I my dad owned several uh, 1022's I shot them all throughout my childhood um, as most as any gun I've ever shot um, I never had a problem with them but uh, I did have a Marlin Mall 60 it's a great gun, but after about 5,000 rounds, uh, it started jamming up after every 100 rounds or so. And I shoot a lot of 22s, and uh, you know, 100 rounds is nothing. I normally shoot two or three hundred a session. You know, it's fun. You know, and that's not even much shooting. I'd like to be able to shoot more. But anyway, but I couldn't just give it a quick clean to get it to shoot again. I'd have to take it all the way apart. You know give it a real detailed cleaning and I noticed that on the inside of the uh, chamber the paint wasn't grinding off it was flaking off in big chunks and whenever you feel the residue because you know it's pretty well lubricated because not over lubricated but lubricated enough it you know that you could still feel oil in it after I would clean it and put it up and shoot it but it was like a sandy grit and I guess it was just chewing up those flakes so I removed all the removed all the inside of it and there was tiny parts I couldn't get to because I didn't want to take a grinder to it in case I decided to send it back so I just kind of sanded it off just barely you know took my time with it and uh, I sold it to a buddy and it just it still just wasn't running like I wanted to I don't know if it was an injector problem but when I talked to Marlin they was pretty much completely confused about the whole ordeal like they've never heard about it before about that sandy type of shit in there and I could pretty much the only thing I could think it was was the paint and I talked to my dad and he said he's shot, he's had plenty of them back in the day and they had the same problems something about the coat and it's just a cheap coat and they put on it I don't know he didn't call it something but anyway uh, I ended up selling it to a buddy of mine who I told him the problem and everything like he didn't care he he uh he don't shoot that much anyway you know he goes out hunting with them and then breaks them when he cleans them 
because it would shoot fine and it was dead on accurate just after a couple hundred rounds or 150 rounds or so it would um, just jam up and I for my 22s I shoot them so much I don't I can't it's too hard to be anal by keeping them clean and I do keep them clean after I, I shoot them but sometimes I might not break it down all the way I'll just give it a quick, quick clean and you know some people might say 100, 100 rounds you have to clean it within so much no you don't I've shot a 22 shouldn't have to any gun should be reliable you shouldn't have to really the way I look at it any gun should be reliable up to a thousand rounds or at least 500 and run pretty smoothly even though 22 you're not gonna uh, put your life on it most people but I'm gonna have fun with it and I'm not having fun having to clean it every hundred rounds so got rid of it but I was on I, I do I love the Marlin Mall 60 one of my favorite guns I've ever owned it was accurate the two magazines were fun didn't hurt your hands um, reloading it um, it was every bit as accurate as a 1022 I don't need a tactical warm up I mean at all it's not my thing but uh thing about going with the stainless steel version and I was just gonna say I won't buy another Marlin just because I didn't want the hassle I mean that stuff on the inside it's not just a one-time deal you know so I figure I always had I've had more experience and better luck with the 1022s Ruger so I'll just go with that but then just curious cuz I've tried to look up the warning on Ruger and Ruger has no warning uh, warning uh, warranty for the 1022s and that just that just drives me crazy I mean I can't believe that Ruger wouldn't stand behind their product at least a year, you know. I know they got some kind of contingency where they probably would fix it, but that they don't guarantee that they'll work on it up to a year. You know, I ain't really too fond of that. But I'm not totally throwing the 1022 out. I like to get stainless, whatever, just because stainless steel guns run a little better. But alright guys, thanks for watching.